Hey folks, I wanted to show you a project I've been working on for a while now. This is a stock off of my brother's Marlin Model 60 1983 model year. Uh, we had both uh, received these as a gift from our father back in 1983, and I still have mine. My brother decided he didn't really want his anymore, asked if I wanted it. So I, uh, of course, agreed to take that from him. Uh, looking it over, it had gotten some dings and scuffs over the years, mostly from being in storage and being moved around. It really hadn't been used a lot uh, since the early 80s. Uh, anyway, uh, it had some damage that needed to be repaired, and so I thought, uh, you know what, I think I'd like to take a chance to try a refinish project. And so uh, what I did was I uh, stripped it down uh, using this uh, citrus strip stripping gel. Uh, it's really simple to use. It's non-petroleum, so you can use it inside. Uh, you see, all you have to do is just spread this right on to the stock and let it sit uh, anywhere from 30 minutes as long as up to uh, 12 hours, depending on how tough it is to get the uh, finish off of your stock. Uh, once it's sat for a while, you'll start to notice that uh, the finish starts to bubble up and then you just use a plastic scraper to remove the existing finish. It's uh, really not a difficult process. The only thing is you don't want to let the, uh, the citrus strip dry on there if you can avoid it. So you can see here uh, where I had begun scraping some of that finish off. Uh, I'm going to switch now to some video where you can take a look and see uh, what things look like as I transitioned from the removal of the finish into preparing for the actual staining. So here you can see the actual stock uh, after the finish has been removed. Uh, it did take several passes with the cleaner, uh, but as you can see, we're getting down to a very clean stock ready for the next step in the process. Now you'll notice that there are some darker areas like this here, uh, and I'll show you some other spots along the stock, and then I do need to unplug those holes there, which won't be a big deal. Uh, but there are certain areas where uh, you'll see the stock looks a little bit darker. Now down in these areas here, I'm not worried about that. And that residue from the stripper will clean up. There's some residue here uh, that I can scrape off. I'll just uh, pull a uh, plastic scraper out here and scrape that off to show you that uh, if you do happen to leave some of this on too long and it dries off, it can be removed um, by doing a little bit of scraping. This is similar to the process I use to actually remove the finish, although I don't have to scrape quite as hard as the finish comes off. I just scrape, wipe it down, scrape, wipe it down, and then reapply the stripper as needed. But you can see there's some areas here where the wood is definitely a little darker. There's another spot here. And then here on the uh, near the butt, we have a little dark area. I actually covered that a couple of times with citrus strip and the color didn't change. So I'm assuming that's just uh, a natural part of the wood itself. So I'm not too concerned about it. I'm just gonna, at this point, I'm done with the stripping part. I wanna move on to the next phases of refinishing. Uh, so, again, we'll take a look at the uh, citrus strip gel here. This worked really well. I'm very pleased with it. It smells nice, and you can safely use it inside because it is not a petroleum-based product. So definitely would highly recommend this for any uh, refinishing projects that you have in the future. My next step now, I'm going to uh, use some clean wash here, uh, some afterwash, which will help remove any stripper residue that's left on there so we can start with a nice clean stock. Uh, I'm going to apply that with some 4 aught steel wool, which will serve not only to help wipe it down, but will actually provide a kind of a pre-finish, um, pre-sanding pre of the uh, stock itself. So I'm about ready to move on. Uh, the next piece of video you see, we're going to have a sanded stock and you'll get a chance to look and see how that looks. Now here you see the uh, sanded stock. I did that with some uh, 220 grit sandpaper uh, and it actually looks really nice. It took out some of the dings and scratches in the stock but not the real deep ones. I know that I probably could have steamed out those really deep gouges. Um, Here's a microfiber cloth I was using, by the way, to wipe it down in between sanding to get rid of that excess, excess dust. Uh, but if you look at this finish, it's really cleaned up very nicely. This uh, birch wood is what I believe this is made of. Uh, it's a fairly soft wood, and so in the sanding I was trying not to get too aggressive. I didn't want to round any of the edges that shouldn't be rounded, but I wanted a nice clean finish. There are some of those, as I mentioned, some deeper gouges that I, I don't want to get into the messing with the steaming. I guess I'm just too impatient. This has already taken a while to get to this point. Uh, but as you can see, we are ready uh, to consider applying the stain. And uh, 
I'm excited to get to that point, so I really don't want to put any more steps into this. My time is limited, and this has already taken a few weeks to get to this point. So uh, next step is to move on to the stain, and uh, we're going to jump here in a moment to the next piece of video where you'll see it uh, post-stain. And here you go. We have stained it with a Minwax product. Uh, I wanted a lighter finish than the original stock had, and so you can see how this looks. You'll see some of those scratches are there. Uh, it is some of the character of the gun. You'll also notice as we go on kind of an overview of the of the stock, you'll see some much darker areas. Now, I applied the stain evenly in one coat across the entire stock. I let it sit the same amount of time across the entire stock. Nothing was gone over twice. So these dark areas that you see, I'm guessing, are just a natural part of the wood where it just readily accepted the stain uh, perhaps a little more deeply into the wood or maybe it's just the nature of the grain in those areas you can see these dark areas here uh, i have to say that you know prior to putting any lacquer finish on here i'm a little concerned about how it's going to look in the end but there's not much i can do about it short of stripping it down again i really don't want to do that so at this point i think it's just time to go ahead and apply the lacquer finish and see how the final product is going to look uh, switch to a new video here you're going to see the finished product and what I've got here on display is my Marlin Model 60. So you can see what the original finish these two guns looked essentially identical before. So you can see what I started with uh, was a fairly dark uh, kind of reddish finish on this original. Uh, you'll see that mine is actually in fairly good condition. Uh, there are a few dings on here. I don't know if you can see them, but I've tried to take very good care of it. And uh, it still looks good, which is why I don't want to mess with the finish on this one. I'd like to have one in the original finish at least. And... Uh, I've taken, you know, precautions to keep this looking nice, so I want to leave this one alone. But uh, since my brother's was a bit more dinged up, you know, I went ahead and went through with the finishing process. And here I'll bring it in now so you can take a look at it, see what you think. This is the newly refinished uh, 1983 Marlin Model 60. Uh, this is the lighter finish, and I have to say, you know, from my point of view, being a first time, a first timer doing this type of refinish project. I'm really very pleased with the results. Um, you can see these two side by side. They look almost like different guns, but they're identical models, identical model year. But this color is much lighter now. Um, I don't think you can find a Marlin Model 60 in a color like this anywhere that hasn't been custom refinished. So I did go with the satin finish at first, but I think it really needed something more. So I went to a full gloss finish and... Uh, I have to say it looks good in those dark areas. Once that lacquer's been put on there, uh, you know, it, it really gives it some character. Um, I was concerned about how they'd look, but in, in the end, I'm really pretty pleased with it. Uh, now, back here at the butt plate, you'll see that that was dinged up before. What I did was take some 400 grain sandpaper and run it across the edge of this. Of course, removed it first. And then when I was done with that, I covered it with some black shoe polish and just kind of polished it down to refinish the black, and it looks really nice. So there you have it, uh, my finished project. Uh, it took several weeks from start to finish. I had to do a little bit here, a little bit there. But in the end, I'm really pleased. So if you have comments or questions, please feel free to let me know. Uh, I'm sure some of you more experienced folks might have seen some mistakes I've made, and I'd be willing to hear what you have to say. For now, I'm going to transition over, leave you with a few final still shots of the guns. And uh, I really appreciate you watching. Uh, thanks for stopping by.